the founder and executive chairman of Fisher Investments. It doesn't get clearer than that, in a sense. He basically said, we're going to raise rates twice more this year. It's just a question of when. Well, first, thank you for having me back, Richard. Uh, you're the best. The reality is, yes. The other reality that people don't talk about, however, is that globally, loan growth continues relatively robust. And these interest rate hikes haven't really eaten into that yet. So while the inflation's a problem, the economy globally has remained stronger than people ever expected, and that's particularly true in America. Except the argument would go against that, sir, that, well, maybe now, but you just wait for these interest rates to, to bite, for example. Let's take the UK, when mortgages that are on fixed come off fixed and suddenly raise, or companies have to refinance and bonds have to be issued. I mean, don't you foresee that they're, if they don't have a slowdown, then you can't get the rates down. You can't get inflation down. Mm, I don't know if that's true. Let's look at America for a second. In America, inflation has come down about as fast as it ever has. And when you look at remaining CPI, about two thirds of that number is what's called imputed rent, which is actually nothing that anybody trades money on. It's a calculated number estimated to be what a person would pay in rent for the home that they own which actually has nothing to do with real inflation. The rest of it is actually already at 2.1% in America. There's less to go than people think. In Britain, it's much worse. And you're absolutely right about that. When you take the two United, the two great Uniteds together uh, and you put them, uh, Britain's in a much worse position and it is a longer lag time. But I don't know that it's about mortgage rates so much. Okay, but then, but then if you take the market... Which of the two markets, the U.S. or the U.K., do you like the look of better? So let's step back. What's leading the market? It's a sluggish growth environment for the economy globally and in both countries. And in that environment, companies that can actually assuredly grow do better in the marketplace almost always. What's been leading the market? High quality growth stocks, whether it's America's tech whether it's continental Europeans, big mega luxury stocks. And the fact is that continues to be the case. The other point is, you know, we're, we're actually now, you know, where we were in the marketplace a year ago for the, for the broad market domestically uh, in the world, in domestically in America and for the world as a whole. And, and the fact of that that people don't think through is we've had all these rate hikes, and I hear your point, Richard. People say it's going to take more time, more time, more time. Well, that's not what they said before. How much more time is it going to take? The, the, there's an entire generation of people who are now learning what higher interest rates look like. I mean, uh, let's face it, Ken, if you and I had been told back in 2008 that rates would say, stay de facto zero for the best part of 15 years, we'd, we'd have said you're mad. Um, but the reality is they did. They have. And now we have to adjust because we're not going back to zero. But that's that's right. But also remember that these rates that seem so high to that new generation are actually looking at rates that in the longer term of history in your life and mine and before we've seen many times before and had the world do OK with. There's just a little adjustment to getting used to it. That's a very good getting used to it. Absolutely. Not the first and it won't be the last. It's good to see you, Ken. It really is. Thank you for making good Thanks sense. Thanks for having me back, Richard. Thank